St. John, the 16th chapter, starting at the first verse, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God a service. <clears throat> and now these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. You know, there's denominations out there, there's faith that uh, people have out there that, that don't even involve God. You know, our nation has opened up the door to all kinds of sin and unrighteousness. We've opened up the door to churches that don't even believe in God, satanic churches. And there's quite a few of them out there. If you knew how many, it would scare you. How many children have been sacrificed because of uh, blood sacrifices that they do. I want you to know that God isn't in that. I want you to know that God is love and He loves us and He loves our children. He loves you and He wants you to be blessed. So many people have been taught the wrong way. But if you've been taught the wrong way, then you get in the right way. I want you to know that the world is hating God. The world didn't like God to begin with, and now he's still hating God. But uh, Matthew 24 chapter, I have some scriptures I'm going to read also. And it says, uh, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? They went to Jesus and they wanted to know. They wanted to know when the end of the world was coming. They were concerned even then. And I know people are concerned even today when the end of the world is coming. And I want you to know right now, this is not the end of the world. If you're talking the end of the world, you're talking at least a thousand seven years before the real end is coming. But there's a time coming called the tribulation period. And before the tribulation period could even begin, God's people have to be taken out of here. The next main event that's going to happen is the rapture of the church. When the rapture of the church comes, the Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Before the devil can even be revealed on this earth, we have to be gone. That's why he hates us so bad. Because he can't show himself until we are gone. We have a covenant with Jesus Christ. In Mark 11, uh, Mark 16, chapter, it says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. That one right there will stop the devil from coming on board. It said they'll heal the sick and they'll raise the dead. They drink any deadly thing that shall not harm them. Let's go on and read some more here. It says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. A lot of people are being deceived today. A lot of people have been sold a, a, a bill of goods that isn't going to get them to heaven. And there's a way that seemeth right, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. But the end there are the ways of death. You don't want the ways of death. You want the ways of life. Jesus came to give life and that more abundantly. And you can't go to heaven without that life. I don't care what anybody says. There's only one door. And Jesus said, I am the door, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through and by me. Then verse says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And that's already happened. I'm telling you, it's happened here in, uh, right here in Columbus. They had posters all over the, the place in the 70s of this young 12-year-old boy who claimed to be, claimed to be Christ doing all kinds of miracles and everything like that. And people actually flooded out to see the man or the boy. And um, these are scriptures that's fulfilled right in new generation of time. And they're going to be more so very soon. Because there's going to be a, a person that's going to rise up and he's going to have power to pull fire down out of heaven. And he's going to be able to make the, an image come alive and everything. So... You're going to see some real powerful stuff during the tribulation period. He can't do it now because it's not his time. But uh, God has a plan, and he wants his plan is to take as many out of here as he can. He wants the church to be ready. 
It says in the sixth verse, it says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in divers places. We've seen that, haven't we? We've seen that sign coming to pass in our generation. You know, during our generation, we've had more earthquakes, more pestilence, and more storms, and all these things that's hit on America and around the world than we have since the beginning of time. And it says, in the 10th verse, it says, Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now we've seen that hating one another, haven't we? Even Christians sometimes hate one another. And that's a sin. It's a sin, Christians. You can't be indulging in that trash and garbage. Sin. Hate is a sin. And it should not be found in a child of Almighty God. No wonder people aren't getting saved anymore. They see the way the hypocritical Christians live. They see the way they act and operate. They see the way they treat one another. They talk about one another, lie to one another, and all this stuff, and still claim to be a Christian, a child of Almighty God. Shame on you! It's because of these things that people are being scattered here and there. People don't even believe in God anymore. Well, they don't believe in you. It's time to get back to God. It's time to pray and get that old time Holy Ghost power inside of you that will give you power over sin. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Listen to this now. In the 13th verse it says, But he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Who's going to be saved? The ones that endures. The ones that endures. There's an endurance here. There's something you've got to endure. You've got to stand up and fight the good fight of faith. The Bible says, come ye apart and be your separate people, saith the Lord. You've got to stand up and do what's right in the eyes of God. There's an endurance. You can't give up because somebody made you mad or somebody hurt your feelings. Bless your heart, just shrug those shoulders up and say, I can take it. I'm a child of Almighty God. Sticks and stones will break my bone, but your words will never hurt me because I've got something greater inside of me. The Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And it don't matter what you've got to go through with. You just keep that fire of God moving inside of you and you can walk through the sin. You can walk through the corruption and you can walk over top of the devil's lies. All oh, the world may hate you. And someday those who proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, they'll want to kill there's people in America right now would like to kill you. And, you know, they'd like to just put a bomb and blow themselves up with it just to get you. But you know one thing? My God will take care of us. He'll watch over us. My God shall supply all of our needs. He can do all that. That 14th verse, listen to this. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When's the end going to come? When this gospel is preached throughout the whole world. This gospel is preached throughout the whole world. Do you hear me? You can't go anywhere in the world and not hear the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody's heard about Jesus Christ. The Bible said, then shall the end come. How close are you to Jesus coming? I'm not talking about the end of the world. I'm talking about an event called the rapture of the church, and I can prove it's going to happen according to the Word of God. And it's going to happen quick. In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, you don't have time to repent. You don't have time to get down and say, God, forgive me. Forgive me that lie I told. Forgive me that person I hurt. Forgive me of all these things. You don't have time to repent going to happen quick and you need to be ready. You need to be on fire for God. Don't take nothing from the devil. Don't take no wooden nickels from the devil because they don't catch. They don't spin. The devil is a liar and a father of it. Jesus said that and I'm saying to you right now, if you listen to the evil spirits of the devil then you're going to be deceived. God don't want to send nobody to hell. 
It's not God's will that any should perish, the Bible says, but that all should come to the knowledge of repentance. It's God's will for you to be saved. It's God's will for you to be happy and free. The devil wants to load you down. There's people out there that wondering how in the world they're going to make it. There's people out there wanting a change in their life, but they don't know where to start. They don't know how to start. And you start down on your knees, my friend. You start turning everything over to Jesus Christ and believe that he hears you. You've got to believe in order to get anything from God. You've got to have faith that what he said in his word, he means it. He means it, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He means that. He loves you. He cares for you. And He wants to help you. <clears throat> I remember before I got saved how miserable I was. How lonely. This world's lonely. Oh, it gets lonely sometimes now. Especially since I've Lost my wife in December. But you know, there's something down inside. There's that Holy Ghost down inside that just thrives and lives and, and says, you can make it. Just keep on going. Just a few more days, a few more miles. Maybe over the next hill, we'll be home. Don't worry about the problems. Get a hold of the problem solver who is Jesus Christ. He'll turn you around. He'll help you because he loves you. God bless you. We have a few um, prayer requests here. Let's see here. This one here is real important here. We, got, we just got this on the screen from Mike Monfort. Mike Monfort. He had COVID-19. Yeah, he had COVID-19. God delivered him from it, and I thank God for that. But he wants to thank everyone for the prayers. He's doing better. And let's pray for him again. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, pray, Lord, for Mike, God, that you'll have your way in his life and strengthen his body and put an immune system in him to where he won't get that anymore. And Lord, if somebody called me last night, Lord, I ask you, God, to touch this uh, person. He's uh, a deacon in his church. Uh, and we pray for him right now in the name of Jesus that his mother... We'll get over this. And she has that virus. And we bind it up in the name of Jesus. Keith, I want you to know that God is able. Keep holding on, brother. Because God is able to take care of this woman. There's some children last night. I got a call from uh, Kenya, Africa. And this woman was worried about her children. Because the children had malaria and all kind of problems. And we prayed for them, quoted scriptures and everything. Just continue to pray for those children in Kenya at this orphanage. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch these children and move upon them, Lord, and let their life be precious before you. I thank you, God, for Gladys, Rule, Phyllis, Archer, Aaron, Stover, David Morgan, Mike Congrove, Neil Johnson. Uh, Barbara Taylor, God bless you, Barbara. It's been a long time since I heard your name, girl. Christy Vargo and Lynn uh, Prego. Priest. Huh, Priest? Yep. Lynn Priest, thank you. Helen Sharon. And I want you to know that we're glad you're with us tonight. And I know one thing God's going to meet every need you have, and He's going to bless you. God bless you.